Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the another type of defect which occur in case of the beam that is known as the web buckling and web crippling. So let's start. So whenever a heavy load or the reaction which is in form of the concentrated load or the reaction it occurs in a small area therefore what will happen if we calculate this stress value that is this load divided by the cross sectional area since we are using the heavy load while we are decreasing the area so that means the incoming stresses they will be in larger magnitudes and because of which the vertical stresses in the beam members they exceed the capacity of the section because of which the compressive stresses occur in case of the vertical elements of the beam and these vertical elements may fail under the two criteria which are known as the web buckling and the web crippling which are shown in the figure so if the entire section that means the middle portion of the section is buckling about its original axis then that is known as the web buckling but if some portion of it is buckling then that is known as the web crippling or web crimping and it is also known as the local buckling phenomena although both the phenomena are fall under the category of the local buckling but still this web crippling it primarily falls under the category of this local buckling because it constitutes the local element and at a local position that's why this come under the category of the local buckling now one by one we will study them in detail so the web buckling phenomena so this web buckling it occurs when the intensity of the vertical compressive stress near the center of the section that means this is the center of the section if we take the middle portion of the i section so this will be the center of section if the intensity of the vertical compressive stress is near the center of the section if they become greater than the critical buckling stress for the web acting as a column so what will happen when we are providing the i section let's say this is an i section which we are providing in the form of the beam section so in case of the i section these top portion and the bottom portion these are known as the flanges while this middle portion this is known as the web of the beam section now if we are providing the rolled steel section so in those cases the d by pw ratio now in the case of the rolled steel section this ratio of d by pw that is the depth of the web section divided by the thickness of the web section this ratio is within permissible limit but in case of the built up sections in which we are using the simply the plate so in that what we do we provide the higher depth for carrying out the load while the thickness is taken in the lesser quantity so that's why this d by tw ratio that decreases and this vertical member it acts like a column and because of which what happens that this vertical member tends to buckle like a column and as we have studied in the case of the compression member so in the compression member every member is designed according to the slenderness ratio so slenderness ratio is calculated based upon that we find out the compressive stresses which are allowed in that particular member which are denoted by sigma c or fcd and based upon this fcd we calculate the load carrying capacity of the section now this load carrying capacity section is compared with the external load if this is less than the external load that means we need to revise the section or we need to distribute the area in such a way so that this pd becomes greater than p and if we achieve this condition then that will be satisfying the criteria and we will be eliminating the web buckling phenomena so as you can see in the picture this is the real image of a steel member which is subjected to the vertical web buckling so because of the heavy load which is present at the top of this steel element this mid section portion of the steel element has buckled this i section the middle portion of this i section has buckled in such a way that it is showing the phenomena of the web buckling now this web buckling is influenced by the end restraint so the end conditions are defining the criteria for the web buckling so the important thing here is that we always assume that in case of web buckling the bottom flange it is completely restrained that means there is no lateral deflection is allowed neither 
the lateral deflection is allowed nor the rotation of the bottom flange is allowed so bottom flange is completely restrained while the top flange it may be having different condition so according to different end condition the eye section will be deflecting or will be experiencing this web buckling phenomena in different forms so for every form we will be having different effective length so in case of the buckling phenomena we are having these four conditions so in all the conditions in all of the four conditions these bottom flange these are completely restrained so this means the bottom flange is not allowed for any rotation or for any deflection now in the case of this first portion the flange in at the top portion it is if we are taking two condition that is a deflection and rotation so in case of the lateral deflection the first example in this case the beam is neither allowed for the deflection neither for the rotation so in that case that means the both the ends are completely fixed so for this case the effective depth that will be denoted by de or that is simply shown by the ratio d1 so that will be taken as the ratio of the d1 by 2 now in the second case as you may be seeing here that this vertical section is bending because of the rotation of the top flange so this top flange has rotated in this way so the top flange is not changing its position it is constant but the rotation is allowed at the top flange so that means we are not allowing the lateral deflection but the rotation is allowed uh, in this case in the second case the effective depth that is taken as equal to the 2 by 3 of d1 these are the codal provision according to indian standard code 800 2007 edition so these are recommended because of the top plane condition so if the top plane condition is falling within the these categories then in that condition we will be using these effective depth so at the third condition what we are doing we are not allowing the rotation of the top member but we are allowing the lateral deflection so that means the lateral deflection is allowed but the rotation is not allowed so whenever a support is allowed to rotate but it is not allowed to move then that acts as a hinge so this is a pinned connection which is also known as the hinge connection so the third case in the so the third case resembles the pinned connection or the hinge connection in this case the effective depth that is taken as equal to the d1 value only now in the fourth case what we are doing the complete rotation and the deflection both are allowed so all the four conditions are assumed here that is one by one we are allowing both the things at the first both the things were not allowed and at the last point we are allowing both the things that means this is completely free so this is completely free while the first condition it was completely fixed the third condition was resembling the pin connection so in the fourth condition this effective depth that will be taken as equal to two times the d1 value so these are the effective depth which are primarily dependent upon the effective length which is taken in case of the column section because now the vertical element is acting like a column so that's why we are taking the recommendations of the column section only now when we analyze the section for the web buckling we need to understand about the load distribution diagram so if a i section is subjected to the load from the below that means if this is subjected to the reaction then the load will be distributed accordingly now this load that is distributed here it is assumed to act or distribute at an angle of 45 degrees so this angle of distribution that is taken as equal to 45 degree in case of the web buckling only now in actual this concentrated load which was coming because of the reaction from the support this is distributed over an area and if this area is b1 into thickness of the width so whenever we are considering the i section so let's say this is an i section which we are considering so let's say this is an i section which we are considering so in three dimension it will be having its length certain value of the length will be there now when we were transferring the load let's say this was the load which is transferred here and this value is 100 into there is some value of this width now let's say this width on which the load is transferred that is 20 so that means the total area which is resisting that is 100 into 20 which is equal to 2000 but when the load comes 
at this section that means at the web portion suddenly the thickness decreases so this value decreases from 100 to 20 let's say now also the width remaining same that means this 20 will be same so now the effective area which is resisting this load is 400 so the load has decreased significantly because of which since this stress can be written as the load upon area and a stress is dependent upon the area inversely and area is decreasing by a significant amount because of which these stress increases by a significant value and that's why the compressive stress is developing in the vertical element they may exceed the capacity of the section which results in the case of the web bucket so for that what we do we calculate the load carrying capacity of the section so this load carrying capacity of the section which is denoted by pwb that is calculated by this width which is resisting this load so this will be b width into the thickness of the web because at this portion the resisting thickness is provided by the web so that's why we take the value of the tw into the capacity of the section which is taken based upon the slenderness ratio and this slenderness ratio is calculated by the effective length divided by the radius of gyration and based upon this value we take the help of the buckling curve which are provided under the compression member so under the buckling curve c we assume that the condition for the ends are fulfilled and based upon that we calculate the fcd value from there and by placing this value we will be calculating this pwb value and this value should exceed the externally applied load now if we look at the load which is transferred from the top so let's say this i section is subjected to the another load w from the another i section which is let's say is the column so this column is transferring the w load over the beam section over an effective width of b1 now if we are distributing it up to 45 degree dispersion angle that means at the neutral axis because the web buckling phenomena occurs at the middle portion that's why we are taking the effective width at the middle portion so now the effective width that will be considered here that will be equal to b1 that is the actual width of the section which is transferring the load plus the distribution length from the both the sides so n1 is added from here and n1 is added from this side so both the sides are adding n1 so that is in the case of the beam which is subjected to the load at the mid span if the load is coming from the reaction that means this side there will be no distribution of the load only one side there will be distribution so in this case this b value will be taken as equal to b1 plus n at the supports so by suitably replacing this b value into the previous equation which is given by pwb as is equal to b into tw into fcd now from here we will calculate this pwb value let's say this value comes out to be 1000 kN now let's say the externally applied load that is of 1500 kN that means we need to increase this capacity because the externally applied load it will not be changing while all the capacity of the section it is restrained it cannot be changed now the only parameter that can be changed either the b or tw now if we are providing this tw originally for the beam section that cannot be changed now only factor which is remaining that is the width of the load transferring area now for that what we do we provide another stiffener or another bearing plate below this i section so let's say we have provided this i section above this plate which is shown by the yellow color now we are providing the i section on top of it so this is the i section now in the second condition so now the load will be distributed from these edges because of which this b which is resisting the area at the neutral axis it will be increasing let's say we are denoting that by b dash and due to increase in the b dash value we will be having certain increase in this value so to obtain the sufficient value we will be increasing this b width that is by providing the suitable stiffening plates or the bearing plates so as to increase the bearing area for the transfer of the load and in turn that will be giving us the value of the capacity in such a way that will be exceeding the externally applied loop. Now looking at the second type of phenomena which is known as the web crippling. So the web crippling it occurs when the webs of the rolled steel sections 
that means the sections which are readily available they are subjected to a large amount of stresses just below the concentrated load or above the reaction so that means it may occur on both the position above the reaction or below the position of the concentrated load because of which what happens the stress concentration occurs because the load is distributed at a very small area and because of which the stress concentration occurs at the junction of the web and the flange as a result the large bearing stresses are developed below the load the same phenomena is occurring here that means that we have studied that at the position of the flange the it was the actual width which was transferring the load now at this position suddenly the width has reduced and because of the reduction in the width or the thickness of this web portion by a significant amount the web is unable to carry this vertical compressive load and because of which the local failure of this material occurs here and that is known as the local buckling and in terms it is known as the crippling or crimping of the web it is also known as the crushing of the web so when large bearing stresses are developed now then because of that the web near the portion of stress concentration it tends to fold over the flange it tends to fold over the flange so this will be the phenomena and this type of local buckling that is known as the crippling or crimping both the words are used interchangeably so that is phenomena is known as the crippling or crimping of the web now looking at the load distribution diagram or load transferring diagram of the web crippling so in this also we are providing the heavy loads so let's say this is the reaction which is coming from the support now this is the web yielding or crippling phenomena in a simply supported beam if we are providing a push load over here that means a load which is subjected over a nominal area it is low but not such that it is subjected to a concentrated load so because of the patch load suddenly the web will be experiencing the extreme stresses because of which this web will be crippled here now at this position we are seeing that the web is crippled now here the only change will be regarding the slope which is provided here that means the load distribution angle uh, in this case will be taken as equal to 10 theta which is equal to 1 by 2.5 value now this will be giving us the load distribution angle so this will be the load distribution angle and this is the only change from the analysis of the web buckling now similarly here we will be calculating the extreme compressive stresses here and those stresses should not exceed the web bearing stresses so in this case if we want to calculate this bearing stresses those will be equal to the externally applied load that is let's say its value is equal to p and those will be equal to p let's say the externally applied load is p divided by the effective area which is resisting this load now when we are considering the web crippling the another change will be that the area will be considered just at the root of the web portion that means just at the connection between the flange and the web so at this portion we will be considering the stresses because at this position the stresses will be critical because they are dropping up to a significant amount and because of which the stresses are increasing humongously Now, because of which this Fe is increasing, so the effective width in this case will be taken as is equal to B1 plus N2. If N1 was the last case, N2 is in this case, and in this case the only factor will be 1 is to 2.5 slope. Because of which the load distribution angle is not equal to 45 degree or any other known angle which can be used directly. So we need to remember this slope only. Now, because of that, we will be calculating the width which is resisting this load. at the root of the web section so this will be the width which will be resisting now the externally applied load so this will be the b value now this b value will be resisting and we will be multiplying this b by tw to calculate the effective area which is resisting this load and for that we will be calculating the stresses so this fe value will be equal to p divided by b tw now here tw will not be varying but this b will be varying now let's say if this was the portion of the beam section and this is subjected to this load over a suitable area because of the connection between the column and the beam 
Now this will be distributed in this manner. And similarly, the B width will be taken here. If this is the slope, then the B will be this value. This will be the value of B dash. And because of the top value of the concentrated load, we will be calculating this Fe value. And this Fe value will be again P by B dash into Tw, which will be now for the reaction or the concentrated load from the top of the flange. Now this value should not exceed the bearing stress of the steel section. Now this bearing stress of the steel section according to IS 800 2007 edition it is given by as equal to 0.75 times of the yielding stress. Now if we replace this value for the steel section that is 250 so this value will not be changing. That will be constant at 187.5 Newton per square millimeter. So now to make sure that this value does not exceed this 187.5 Newton per square millimeter, we can increase this B dash value or TW value so as to keep this value in check. So again here we will be providing suitable stiffening plates or the bearing plates below the column section. Now the column section will be provided on top of it. So let's say this is an I section which is transferring the load. So on top of this yellow steel section, we are providing the I section in such a way that now the load distribution will be along these edges because of which now this B value will be increasing. So this will be the increased B value. And now if we increase this B value, obviously this Fe value will decrease. And because of that, we will be making sure that this Fe does not exceed the bearing stresses of the steel section. So in case of the rolled steel section, that is the sections of the steel which are readily available in the market for the given dimension, for rolled steel section, the phenomena of web crippling is predominant. While for the built up section, it is found that the web buckling phenomena is predominant. Now it has been found that if the beam is safe, in crippling that means this crippling is occurring because of the local phenomena of the failure so if the beam is safe in crippling then it will be obviously safe in case of buckling that is the in web buckling so that is the check that has to be kept in mind for the analysis purpose that whenever we want to check we will be checking with the help of the crippling criteria that the Fe value should not exceed FBR and if this is proven to be true then we need not check for the web buckling criteria. So this completes the discussion regarding the web buckling and crippling. In the next video we will be looking at the shear lag effect in the case of the beam. So thank you.